Hello everyone, uh, this is Ben with Income Options Trading and in today's video I wanted to go over one of my core strategies which is a short strangle in the micro e-mini S&P 500 futures. So quick, a dis quick disclaimer before we get started here that this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, options are risky and you should know what you're doing before you trade and you could lose everything in your account if you don't know what you're doing especially with futures, so make sure that you know what you are doing before uh, you jump into any real trades. Uh, paper trading is something that uh, can be helpful with futures as they are uh, extra leveraged products and they're much bigger than what people uh, might think they are. So for those that don't know, uh, the micro e-mini S&P 500 futures is uh, forward slash MES. Uh, I am using the Tastyworks software in this video. Uh, between now and the end of the year, they do have a promo uh, where if you open and fund a new account with $10,000, they will give you $500. Uh, so there is a link uh, to my referral link uh, to that promo in the description below if that's something you're interested in. Uh, I think it's a pretty good promo. And like I said, it's now through the end of 2021. Uh, so I went to forward slash MES. You can look at the daily chart here. Uh, we can see uh, it's just been uh, roaring higher for the last six months. We've had a little bit of a dip, and now we're, uh, we've been strong the last several days here. Uh, this morning, we were down much further. I wish I would have opened up the short strangle then as the volatility had popped at that point. You can see the futures, um, the volatility futures, which is where slash VX is down. Uh, you can think of that as the spot price and the VIX, which is 30 days out, uh, is up a little bit. So volatility is basically unchanged right now. Like I said, they were both up earlier today. Uh, so I would have liked to put them on then, but uh, that's all right. I'm going to the options chain here, and I like to go between 30 and 60 days. Um, you could do 45 days if you want. I usually like to go out a little bit further, give myself a little bit more time. Uh, things moved out further tend to move a little bit slower, uh, so there's not as much you have to do uh, right away. So I would recommend starting with the 60 days if you are newer to uh, short strangle strategies. And I'm a little bit more aggressive with my short strangles. A lot of people go, you know, to the 10 or 15 delta. I like to stick in between the 20 and 30 delta and manage a little bit more aggressively. Uh, so you can see at the 20 delta here, or the 21 delta, here's my delta column. So the 4200 strike here, I'm getting about a 4450, around up to $45 credit. Uh, every point in the MES is worth five dollars. So you can see that if you take 45 and you multiply it by five, you would get 225. Uh, so that is my max profit if I were to just open up this short put. And my max loss here is 21,000, and that would be the notional value of MES. So if you take, it's about 4,500 dollars. Uh, or 4,500 points, which is the, the last tick of the MES. Uh, multiply that by five, and that is your notional value. Uh, just for um, so people know, the forward slash ES, which is the E-mini S&P 500, uh, this is $50 a point. So this is 10 times the size of the micro version. So if you're if you've done futures a lot, if you have a larger account, you can use this. You can use forward slash ES, uh, but it's a much bigger product. So I wouldn't recommend it to anyone who is new at this. So the MES, go back here, option chain, 20 delta, uh, gives us about 225 in potential profit. If I go up to the higher end of the 30 delta, we're at 320. So it's about a hundred dollar difference between the twenty and thirty delta, so you can kind of you can uh, choose a delta that fits what uh, you want to do. 
I'll just stick with the 25 delta. I'll go down to the nearest 50 just uh, to be cleaner. So that's a 24 delta. And then the call side, I like to be a little bit more conservative because stocks only go up. So I'm going to do the 20 delta. I'll actually go to the 4650 strike, which is the 22 delta. So you can see my delta here, 0.02 on here. Uh, so this is the 22 and the 24. So I'm net positive 2 delta. So this is a very, very slightly bullish uh, short strangle. I would consider this delta neutral, but uh, a tiny bit skewed bullish here. Uh, you can see our max profit would be 391 if we were to get filled here. And our buying power effect is only $813 for this short strangle. Uh, one MES contract is worth uh, 50 shares of SPY. So one short strangle in MES is worth... Uh, two short strangles in MES is worth one short strangle in SPY. So I'm just I want to compare the buying power uh, efficiency here. So the buying power reduction for MES takes advantage of span margin. Uh, so if you're not if you don't know what span margin is, span margin is used in the futures world, and it, it's basically your one day uh, max risk. Whereas if you trade with equities, uh, the risk is price based and it's based on the whole life of the trade. So span margin actively looks at volatility in the price and determines what is uh, kind of the, the, the theoretical max risk of a one-day play. So here they think about $800 for a, a short strangle. So I could be uh, up or down $800 worst case scenario on, on any given day. Uh, this would be, you know, going against you uh, typically. Um, so, I did one short strangle here. If I change the quantity to two, you can see I have two short puts and two short calls. My buying power effect is 1630. So, I go into SBY and go 60 days out. I think I did the 25 delta on the put side. And did the 22 delta on the call side, I'll do the 21. We're at over $7,000. So $7,000 in buying power for the SPY. And if I go back to MES, we're at $1,600. So both of these strangles are the same notional value. Uh, but the MES one uses a lot less buying power. So it's much more leverage and much more capital efficient. So if you're doing these short strangles, you don't want to over leverage yourself using short strangles. So if you want to do more than one uh, short strangle in SPY, then I want to do more than two short strangles in MES. So just be aware of that when you're using futures that the they're uh, leveraged products, so you don't want to over allocate too much. So for this MES strangle here, I'm just going to do one. So I'm selling one of the 4250 and the 4650. So I'll try to get filled here at 7800. Like I said, every point is $5. I got filled right at mid. Uh, so if I went down one tick and every tick is a quarter of a point, uh, that's $1.25. So if I went down one tick, I'd give up $1.25, which isn't that bad. Basically a penny in SBY. So liquidity isn't really an issue here. So for managing this, I'm going to try to take this off at 50% initial uh, credit for the profit. So in Tastyworks, if I click on both of these legs, right click where it says close profit, you can change this to whatever you desire, 50% uh, as a default, so I'll go with that. And you can see 39. Um, sometimes if you, let's say you, you got this for something and 25 cents, or a quarter of a point, uh, you know, this might be 39.12 or something. 
well, this has to be in 25 or uh, 0.25 increments. So you just have to go up or down in order for it to uh, work out. If you click review and send, it'll say that uh, it's invalid. So I'm gonna put that in for 50% profit. And best case scenario is that this gets filled and MES just sits here and I don't have to do anything. But that rarely happens. So how am I gonna defend this if it goes against me? Uh, basically, as the market moves against me, uh, I'm going to roll the untested side. And I usually roll the untested side when the overall uh, net delta of the strangle gets to around 20 or 30 delta. So right now, the short put is giving me 24 delta. The short call is giving me negative 22 uh, delta. So this position is positive 2 delta. I just want to point out here that uh, on the trade page, so I have this short call here. Actually, I'm, I'm just going to get rid of this so it's a little bit easier to, to see that got filled. So I said my position delta is 2 delta, but on the trade page here, my ETF equivalent delta is 1 delta. That's because MES is half the size of SPY. Uh, so sometimes... If you hover your mouse over the delta, it'll tell you what ETF it's comparing it to. Um, I'm not sure why it's not now, but the ETF equivalent is uh, SBY in this case. So with MES, it's kind of easy. Um, so basically, you want to look for when this turns into 10 to 15. That's when you want to do something. Or you can go in here. The 10, the 10 to 15 delta on here will equate to 20 to 30 delta of MES delta. So hopefully that's not too confusing. Um, if it is, uh, leave a comment in the in the disc, uh, uh, in the video below, and I can answer that through there. So if the market goes up and I become uh, short the market because this delta increases, which is my short call, and this delta lowers, which is my bullish part, I will roll this up. So if I, if this position becomes net long or net short, excuse me, 20 delta, I will try to cut that in half, and so I will roll this up 10 delta. So in this case, if this was 24, I would roll up and I would sell the 34 delta. So rolling, uh, it kind of sounds like a fancy term, but it's basically buying back or closing your position and re-establishing the position at a new strike. So in this case, I'd buy back the 4250 strike and I'd sell a new 4360 strike. And for doing that, I would gain about 20 points in credit, which times five is $100. So I would, I would get about $100 if I rolled this short put up. Um, and then I would try to uh, close this for 50% of my original profit target. So an easy way of doing that is if you look at the activity tab here. Uh, so I'm trying to make 39 points on this. If I gain another 20, I would add 20 to this 39, which would be $59. So after I rolled that, I would try to close at 59 instead of the original 39. So that, that would be my, uh, my new closing target. So for defending, I will go all the way to an inverted strangle. So what that means is I would keep rolling the puts up if the market keeps going up. I would roll to a straddle. And my next move after this would be, if we're not close to the 21 DTE mark, I would go inverted uh, just to reduce my deltas. And inverted just means your short put is higher than your short call. I'll do that. And once I become inverted, my next move after that, if the market continues to move against me, would be to move it out in time. 
So then I would buy back this position here and I would sell out a new position in the future and try and do that for a net credit. Uh, so that would be uh, my mechanics for defending the trade. Um, if, if it ever starts to get away from you, you can always just close out and reestablish. Um, this product is, is relatively small. Like I said, it's half the size of SPY. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's usually manageable and it's actually pretty liquid. Um, the overnight sessions do get a little bit wide, so you just want to be careful with opening up new positions or rolling positions overnight. Um, during the day or during uh, cash market or uh, hours is when you're going to have the best liquidity and get the best fills. So I would try to wait to do the management there unless there's a big overnight move. Um, and then I would do it then. Uh, so that's basically the MES short strangle. Like I said, this is one of my core strategies that I like to have on at all times. I like doing it in the futures for the buying power reduction, uh, the efficiency of that due to span margin. Like I said, uh, even though it has span margin, you don't want to over leverage yourself. So think of one MES short strangle as half of one SPY short strangle, so don't get over leveraged. Um, I like to use the S&P 500. Uh, it's a, it's a broad-based index, so it's got 500 stocks in it, uh, it moves relatively uh, slow, slowly compared to its uh, uh, individual stocks. So it's a little bit easier to manage uh, because it's an index that has a little bit lower volatility compared to most of the stocks that are in it. But it's a, it's a good way to um, avoid some of those giant outlier moves that you might get in some uh, other individual stocks. Uh, if you're interested, I also have a Discord uh, channel, which is $10 a month. Um, I put on my trades, uh, share my trade logs, uh, share my trades, answer any questions people have, um, share any new strategies or tips that I've learned. Um, and it's just uh, a good way to have a community um, uh, while you're trading. And if you have questions on there, you can, you can ask and um, I'll answer those right away. So that's something you can do. Uh, if you're interested, you can sign up through my gold membership through my YouTube channel here. And if you link your YouTube channel to your Discord account, uh, you'll gain access to the server. And it's also a cancel any time. So it's just 10 bucks a month. And if you don't, don't like it, then you can just cancel and uh, that's it. Uh, so that's this video. If, if you found it helpful, um, if you could hit the like button, the subscribe button, that would help quite a bit. Uh, otherwise, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, or you can shoot me an email at incomeoptionstrading at gmail.com, or check out my website. Uh, there's more information in the description below, uh, and thanks for watching.